Okay, hello there ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Um, firstly, again, apologies um, for the amount of time between this tutorial and my previous one. Uh, university is just taking up a lot of my time, so you're going to notice the channel kind of dying down quite a bit, but when I get a chance I will be putting these videos up. Um, another really simple tutorial for today, um, we're just going to take a look at explosions, okay? So one of, the, one of the greatest things about a lot of games these days is the stuff that developers do with physics. Um, now physics is an amazing subject, it's a, it's a really interesting field, uh, and none more so than in video games, because in video games we can manipulate the laws of physics to be as we want them to, um, without getting too bogged down with that nonsense. Basically, let me take a look, let me just show you kind of what we've got here going on here. Um, so imagine that this is a house, now this is just the first person template box, um, I've just cleared out, so all I've got here is a first person template, these are the props from the start content folder, you can see down here the props. Uh, and all I've done is drag a couple out and simulate physics on all of them, so they are all uh, physics enabled. Now what we're going to do is, with our little gun here, we're going to fire this thing off, and you can see the explosion over there. However, if I fire it myself here, you'll notice that I kind of get pushed back. Now that's because the ex there's actually a force of an explosion there. So I mean, you could use this system for rocket jumps, I suppose, if you wanted to. So if I kind of jump, you see I can boost my jump there. So if I jump on the side of this wall, you see the height I get. If I rocket jump, yeah, you know. Let's try it again. Let's see if we can get a good view of that. Um, yeah, you can see immediately there, you know, I'm jumping quite a bit higher. So let's just go over here and quickly demonstrate what we're going to do with the physics objects. We fire the explosion in there. Boom. Everything's affected. It's all thrown away. The, the lighter objects. Did you see the, uh, the little lamp piece there? The lamp piece actually flung over that wall then. Let's try and do that again. So the lamp again flown over, flown oh, to the far corner, the statue to the far corner, the lighter objects are thrown further, the heavier objects are closer, just like in real life. So how are we going to go ahead and make this explosion? So, <coughs> excuse me, what I'm going to go ahead and do, first of all, is delete this explosion thing because, you know, uh, we're going to be making that. And also inside my first person blueprint, inside my first person projectile, let me just drag them onto this screen over here. I'm going to go ahead and delete this and I'll show you just what we're making. So... This is essentially what you have by default here, apart apart from these physics objects. So I'm going to assume you've got your own map built, you've got your physics objects in there. Now you're looking for an explosion. So let's go ahead and take a look at creating that. Now you're going to need to add one of these radial force actors. That's the force that actually does your explosion. So if you put that in there, you see you get a nice little radius. You know, that's going to be the radius of your explosion. So let's, let's blow that up a bit. Uh, the pun was intended, but you know, ignore that. Let's make this radius a thousand. So, you know, bigger explosion, bigger radius, we're going to make it big boom. Um, and the impulse strength, we're going to knock that up to, let's take that up to 5,000. And the force strength here, 100. Now, the radius, impulse strength, and force strength, these are not fixed, um, fixed, I want to say variables, that's the wrong word, uh, fixed values. Uh, you can play around with these as much as you want until the explosion is to your liking. So, be sure to just take away from this, just go ahead, go play with it. Um... You know, get it, get it the way that you want it. Get the explosions the way that you want them. Um, <coughs> excuse me there. Okay, so we've got ourselves an explosion. Now, if we hit and play in the game, nothing happens because we're not firing an impulse. You know, we need to fire off that 5,000 impulse there. So we're going to go ahead and add the radial force actor to a blueprint, stroke script. And we're just going to name this one explosion. We'll save it inside our first person blueprints. Just for, you know, keeping things tidy. So we'll put that in there, and we're presented with this. And now, if we select this, you can see that we have our radius there. We have our 5,000, our 100. It's kept the values that we set before. We're also, just for effect, going to go ahead and add a particle system using the default explosion. Um, we're going to scale it up a bit, make it something like 5. You know, make it that bit of a, bit of a bigger bang, really. Um, now, inside the event graph, what we're going to do is we're going to do if off on event begin play. So we're going to drag off an event begin play, and we're going to go to, uh, actually, sorry, we need to drag off the force component here. We need to get the force component, and then we need to fire an impulse. So from begin play, we're going to fire an impulse, but after we've fired the impulse, we're going to want to set a delay. So fire up a delay of something like two seconds. Now, the only reason we're making this delay is to uh, give the, we're going to destroy the actor after that. Just a moment there. Okay, so we've we fired the impulse. Two seconds later, we're going to destroy we're going to destroy the actor. Now, the reason we're doing that is we're leaving the actor in the world for two seconds, simply um, to allow the the full force. Like, okay, so imagine you've got a, the radius there of, of a thousand. Um, if you 
spawn this actor, then destroy it immediately. It's it's not going to have the full range of force. So from the center out to the the, uh, the outer hemisphere, wrong word. You know what I mean. The outer sphere. So we're going to give it two seconds, basically, to allow the full full range of the explosion to be in there, but also to allow the particle effect to run its full course before we go ahead and destroy the particle effect. So that's simply it. That's all we're going to do inside here. So the explosion is simply fire impulse, delay, and then destroy the actor. Inside the first person projectile, this is what you'll have by default. Now that kind of adds an impulse, so you know when you fire the projectile at, um, when you fire at it, <coughs> excuse me, this fresh cough really hasn't left me yet. Um, when you fire the, the ball at a, at a physics enabled object, it kind of knocks it over. Well, we're going to get rid of that, so we know that that's not interfering with it. So we're going to destroy that. And um, we're going to um, spawn actor from class. And obviously the class that we want to spawn is explosion. That's the class that we've just created. And that's the class that we'll be, we'll be spawning to spawn the radial force actor and to spawn the particle effect that's going to simulate our explosion. So we're going to spawn the spawn actor here. And off the hit locations, we need to get where the ball lands. Where are we going to spawn this thing? So from the hit location, we're going to make a transform. And we're going to plug our transform value into the spawn transform of the spawn actor explosion. Go ahead and compile that. Hit save. That's simply all we're going to do inside here as well. So if I now go ahead and just shoot my ball. You'll notice we get an explosion over there. Oh, okay. Now, <laughs> right. I did forget to do one thing. Let's, fire, let's head on back in here. What's happening is this ball bounces and every time it lands somewhere, it's doing this. So what we need to do is destroy the actor once we've done our first explosion. So as soon as this, this grenade, I suppose you could call it a grenade launcher, as soon as this grenade has landed and exploded, we're not going to let the grenade keep bouncing and exploding again because grenades don't explode more than once. Maybe in your game they do, in which case, you know, keep this out. You've got a constantly exploding grenade. Just some random ideas there. But yeah, there you go. So you destroy the actor. Let's go ahead and try that again. Fire one up there. Boom, 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 boom. <coughs> okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and delete this actor here. Um, and now let's head into our explosion and take a look again. So we want this explosion to be a little bit more powerful. So let's head on into the force, uh, the force component. The impulse strength, we're going to knock this up to something like 10,000. Just make it a little bit strong. So I'm going to move that off that screen onto a different screen. Uh, and fire that in there. And you can see that everything now moves a little bit more. So if I bring that back. And um, we're going to knock the... Going to go ahead into that again. Just tweaking with it. So this is what you're going to need to do. Is basically just to tweak with this until you get the strength of the explosion to what, what you're happy with. Let's go ahead and fire it again. Quite a bit stronger. Bigger explosion there. You know, sending the big pieces flying. The table really didn't take much damage. Let's see if we can send that table flying this time. Not quite, but we did manage to throw, you know, make a pretty big explosion there. Uh, and if we fire it near ourselves, you can see that, the, you know, this explosion's big and it is powerful. And we, we could probably even throw ourselves on the map with this thing. There you go. So that's it, guys. That's going to wrap up this tutorial. That's basically covering radial force actors, basically covering uh, spawning hits with the projectile. I may have covered stuff like this in the past, but I know I briefly touched on radial force actors when I did my destructible mesh video a long time ago. If you're, wanting to, if you're wanting to destroy worlds, so let's say you've built a house, right? And you've got these chairs and things around it. If you want to blow these chairs around the house, this tutorial will cover that for you. Now, if you want to blow the walls off the house, something like Battlefield 4, you know, you want to make this really interesting. Look on through my channel, head back to my past videos. You'll find that I made a video on destructible meshes and how they're made. Now, if you take that video, you follow that tutorial and make your destructible meshes for your walls and then come back to this video, get your explosion set up, combine the two guys, boom, you're going to be blowing down walls in no time. So thanks very much for watching. Um, I hope this video has been helpful. I hope it's been uh, informative to you guys. Um, and as always, take care and I will see you on the next video.